Hi, welcome to Foreigner in the Philippines. Well, obviously the subject of safety is not going away. We're in a situation where uh, it keeps coming up. People are sending me stuff um, about who was killed. Um, it's a constant thing. Every day that we get up out of bed, we have choices to make. And some of those choices are to be courageous about the challenges that we face in our lives. And this whole thing now with people being killed uh, with guns is is not any different. It's just more extreme. Now, what you have to surely be aware of is how much violence do you see in your everyday... Never mind whether you're in the Philippines or whether you're anywhere else, right? Anywhere in the world, how much violence do you see on a daily basis in your lives? I see none. That doesn't mean that there isn't any violence. It just means that for whatever reasons are in my head, I choose not to be in those situations. Now, we were invited to a party the other day and it was, uh, I think it was the graduation of, um, of a child uh, out of school, a child, a youngster out of school. Now, we were told that we would be very welcome. Well, we couldn't go in the end anyway because we were out of town. So what were the choices that we faced when, when my wife said we've been invited to that party? Now, I'll be the only foreigner. Now, it is, it's pertinent to talk about being the only foreigner. Why? Because it's only the foreigner that's getting kidnapped. They're not kidnapping any, any Filipinos, okay? So, I'm the only foreigner in the area. Um, I'm uh, a significant uh, part of any group that happens, not because I'm important, but because I'm a foreigner. Okay, so what is, what is expected of a foreigner when he arrives in a group? Well, unfortunately, as my wife pointed out, she said, I would like to go, but what will happen will be that the men in the group there will expect the foreigner and let's face it all all foreigners are filthy rich we're all we're all rich we've all got i mean I, i'm sitting on wads and wads of money right now <laughs> yeah right um but there is this perception that there is money around this is what fuels the whole kidnapping industry is the perception that foreigners, if, even if they don't carry a lot of money, have access to money. Oh, boy, if, um, if there are any would-be kidnappers uh, watching in on their uh, cell phones at the side of the road by their pump boat and uh, while they're cleaning their AKG or whatever, uh, whatever rifle it is, that's as much as I know about them, um, I... I don't have any access to any more money than I can actually put my hand on. And that's what's in my wallet. Will anybody pay for me? I don't think so. But I'm only joking on this. This is not a, a message to uh, see if I can avoid being kidnapped. It is about how much violence we see in our daily lives. Where have we placed ourselves? Now, when I was a musician... I was a professional musician. I worked in places where there was alcohol. Now, I know that people who have watched my videos before will know that I'm not, I'm not a drinker. I have no interest. In fact, um, I am actually quite habitual in my alcohol um, needs. About every um, four or five or six months or maybe might be even four or five six years I get the hungering um, the uh, I want I need to have some alcohol so I go out and I buy uh, a can there she is and she's lovely I buy a can of beer 
and um, boy I soldier my way through almost the whole can before I wonder why did I do that so that's my attitude to to alcohol I, I just don't have any interest in it and it's not that I'm down on anybody who does but this is the fact is that the world society at large views alcohol not just as an acceptable drug but as a dangerous one that's why in places like California there is re uh, zero tolerance on alcohol if you get pulled up by a cop and he decides that there's a whiff of alcohol in the car or on your breath or whatever no point in telling him that your toothpaste is um, is the uh, the beer flavor he'll have you do a breathalyzer and if apparently if you've got any alcohol in your blood you're done so it's perceived as being something that generates a dangerous environment so back to our party and how I behave on how Beth and I behave as a family on a day-to-day -day basis as soon as Beth explains to me what will happen will be they will expect us to buy some drink and so, so me with my so naive well we can get so we can get um, a crate of coke and take that along can't we um, no she said I, I think that they'll be looking for something a little bit stronger than coke so, so I'm saying, well, I'm not about to buy anybody any beer, so we didn't go. It's as simple as that. If there is a situation where there is alcohol, I just, if I can't turn around and walk away, I walk backwards. But I get out of there. It's not that I, I don't go, oh no, they're, they're drinking beer, we better run away. I don't do that. I just choose not to be in an area where a mind-altering substance is being consumed. I never ever found talking to someone who'd had a few beers was a rewarding experience. I I just never found that because it doesn't it doesn't appeal to me. Now sometimes and actually. Uh, more often than I care to think, we might stop at the Sari Sari store. Straight away, as soon as we stop, if someone holds up a glass, we don't get out of the car, we just drive on. Because if you get out of a, a car and somebody there is drinking, then uh, the goodwill hospitality mindset of the average Filipino will want you to have a drink. Come on, Kano, uh, have a drink. Um, have fun, have a drink. One of my best friends told me that I am uh, not in the A-team because I don't know how to have fun, because I don't drink. So you see the mindset. So if we see someone and they're sharing a bottle, I say, cheers, give them the thumbs up, and we drive on. Uh, or... I do my acceptable lie. I point to the stomach because if I've got an ulcer, so. I do that. And then I buy the Coca-Cola that I got out to see, which is nevertheless going to rot my guts, I know. And we get back in the car and we get out of there. What I'm trying to say, I'm very long-winded, I know, because I'm an old fart. Well, and what I'm trying to say is you, you choose your environments. And if you choose an environment which has a mind-altering drug being consumed on a let's everybody have a great time, you can expect the chances of having trouble rise very, very sharply. Why do you think that when you uh, when you go to get insured, they say, do you have any um, drunk charges against you? Even when you go for your citizenship in America, and don't tell me that this is not true, because I've stood there at the end of a line 
listening to uh, a questionnaire being answered by a uh, officer of the immigration service uh, to a young Mexican guy who was admitting that he had a, D a DUI, uh, a drunk uh, under the influence of drink. And the officer said, yeah, you're going to have to leave this for a little while because they're not going to look at you. In America, they ask, do you have a moving violation? And I don't think that that means are you carrying your parking ticket around with you. It's not a great idea to associate with people who are under the influence of anything. Why is it more acceptable to have uh, to be in the company of someone who has a little buzz on because he had, um, you know, a rum chaser or a, whatever they call it, um, to the couple of beers that he had. Even that phrase, a couple of beers. Have you been drinking? No, <laughs> I had a couple of beers, but I haven't been drinking. Well, it doesn't make sense to think that you are as safe in a pub or a bar as you are in a coffee bar. You're not as safe in Mr. Dunkin' Donuts as you are in Behind the Eight Ball bar. Think about that. It's not, um, it's not a difficult thing to work out. So the danger thing, if you are feeling that you're in danger in a given area that, that you're in, I remember that at one time I would just absolutely love to to um, be in the uh, the happening part of town where everything was there, lots of restaurants and bars, and you could go out and have a great time, and there's always lots of girls there and everything. Yeah, and lots of fights and uh, trouble uh, and um, guys acting silly and stupid. And if you're with a pretty woman, uh, they think that they can come over and uh, and talk to her as if she's got a shingle out saying, can you please come and pick me up? It happens in those places. I don't go with my beautiful wife to a place where someone might take it into his head that she would be much, much better off with them than with me. It doesn't take any working out. So when you're out there feeling safe, when you're out there feeling unsafe, I should say, and you're looking at a report where in a banger suddenly uh, came awake, everybody was asleep and they all went, what? what happened? And they were told to get out of your houses because we're going to be shooting guns in a little while. So four or five hundred people went out and did something else for the for the afternoon um, and the police uh, and the the armed forces uh, whatever the forces were that that, that uh, were there to se sent there to handle that thing in Ilaba in Abanga, they they sorted it out um, to a terminal conclusion for some and uh, some lives were lost and um, it doesn't minimize what happened. Those families that lost those people will be devastated. And that's their job. That's what they do. Do I think it's to be taken lightly? No, I don't. But then I don't volunteer to be a cop. And I don't volunteer to be in the armed forces. I did my time in that but a long, long time ago. And I served as a musician. I served... I never... You may find this hard to, as far to believe as that somebody has never smoked a marijuana um, joint. I haven't smoked a marijuana joint. Don't want to. And I've never fired a rifle. Or in all of my time in the army, eight and a half years, I never fired a gun. Because I was a musician. I mean, I probably did just as much damage playing the trombone badly as um, anybody with a gun, but uh, they never sent me into a trouble zone with my trombone. So, I'm not feeling terrifically endangered. I find myself looking over my shoulder a little bit more now because I think, well, like last night, we were out late last night. We went out and we had dinner late and we came out of the restaurant 
we uploaded a few videos, came out of the restaurant, and, and as we're getting into the truck, I found myself looking around. Uh, and then just at that moment that I was putting the key into the lock, I saw four guys walk towards me. And what did I think? Well, I didn't reach for the pepper spray or my four inch bladed um, knife. Uh, I just watched uh, and then they passed and the whole thing was over and and I'm thinking, well, that's as violent as my life gets. So look at what's in your life right now. Look at where you live. Look at, um, look at how lovely your wife is. What are you doing, honey? I didn't, we don't have mirror. Your we mirror don't have is, a mirror. Oh, we have mirror, but no. that mirror is not good. But uh, my phone is honey, good. Honey, that mirror isn't so bad. It makes me, even me, look okay. Yeah. So uh, won't it do wonders for you? But the phone is good. The phone is good. Yeah. She's using the phone as a mirror. This is my uh, warrior princess. Uh, actually, that's probably why I didn't feel um, in danger last night. She was with me, and she would have uh, she would have told them all what to do. Like now, I'm the I'm the one that uh, that writes. I'm the one that talks too much, and when. Um, a message has to be sent. She tells me what to say. Oh, what you need to say is this, and I have to look at her and say, D "Do you mind? I don't need." You to I give you an idea what to say, okay? Because sometimes she asks, he asked me, "What would I say?" And I said, "No, I say, me. what am I? What I'm given? Um, I'm given." Uh, I have to send a message to somebody, and, and quite rightly, I say, well, "What's the message about?" <laughs> so, so we're going swimming right now, getting yeah. onto a lighter subject. Um, and uh, the biggest danger that I'll have there is that um, two or three kids might swamp me, and I won't be able to take a breath for uh, several minutes. That would be a kind of worrying for me. Happy, happy, tor happy Holy Thursday! Enjoy the weekend. Is it? Is yeah, it? It's, it's Holy Thursday today. Yeah, it, it's not it's a way any, to not, reminisce. Not by anything I did. Yeah, it's all about the reminisce. You know, reminiscing. It, reminiscing. What? <laughs> no, it's about. It, this is the belief that it's Holy Thursday, so it's just reminisce. You know, reminisce. <laughs> <laughs> what can anybody? What can anybody do against that smile? <laughs> so. Uh, here's a foreigner in the Philippines. Stay safe. Um, can you do otherwise? Uh, well, I guess you can. <laughs> Bye for now.